Recently Char enjoys hunting bandits using her magic and instructs Hart to exterminate them. Suddenly, Flea arrives after hearing from Char that Hart often acts alone. Turns out Flea also wants to join in the action. Hearing this, Char becomes excited as she is seen in anime when a comrade comes to save the hero in dangerous situations. Hart feels pressured by Char and Flea to act accordingly. Unable to refuse anymore, he warns Flea not to show extreme scenes to Char before they set off. Upon arrival, the bandits are confused by the sound of people from the forest. Slowly revealing themselves, Hart introduces himself as the Black Knight in a very embarrassing pose. Mimicking her master, Flea introduces herself as the Red Soldier. The bandits are puzzled by their antics. Contrary to their promise, Flea immediately uses her fire magic to brutally attack the bandits. Hart even uses protective magic to shield the bandits from Flea's assault. Seeing her attack has no effect, Flea increases the intensity of her fire. Finally, Hart knocks Flea on the head to stop her from going overboard. He then orders her to go home while he deals with the rest alone. After returning home, Hart collapses from exhaustion after dealing with the stubborn Flea. Char is overjoyed to see both of them in action. Flea is reminded that her attack was blocked by something during the fight. She wants to fight with all her might to help her master. However, Hart doesn't want Flea to participate in action again. Unfortunately, Char also wants to see both of them in action together again. It seems Hart's wish to live as a reclusive unemployed person in his room will not be fulfilled for a while. Meanwhile, Lyos is still upset about being humiliated by Hart during their sword duel. Lyos heard that Hart is just a level 2 kid. His servant comes to discuss something with him. For tomorrow's inspection, the servant asks him to invite Charlotte. At first, Lyos is unwilling to invite the child. However, after the servant firmly insists that it's for his own good, Lyos finally agrees. On the other hand, Char returns to Hart's room after the dinner event. Earlier, Hart also attended the event, but it was his clone that went. Char brings luxurious food from the event for Hart. The clone is upset because the Rayal Hart ordered him to attend the event and then enjoy the food without pressure. The clone can't take it anymore. He is always forced to do things he dislikes and immediately collapses after complaining like that. Char is worried about her brother's clone, as he seems to be in a bad state. However, Char still has to participate in the inspection tomorrow. Hart asks why Char is participating in the inspection. Char explains that she was invited by Prince Lyos. After seeing his suffering clone, Hart reluctantly decides to carry out his activities on his own for the time being. At night, Hart wants to ensure that tomorrow will be safe if Char joins. He investigates the inspection route using projection magic. During this, he sees a group of robed individuals performing a ritual in the middle of the forest. Innocently, Hart approaches them and asks what they are doing. He mentions that he happened to pass by and will inquire with Count Gordo to confirm their activities. The people immediately mistake Hart for Count Gordo's subordinate and try to eliminate him. Hearing this, Hart suddenly decides not to show mercy to them. As usual, Hart defeats the enemies effortlessly. However, one person summons a group of night skeletons from the magic circle they created. Again, the skeletons prove no match for Hart's abilities. However, the defeated skeletons manage to rise again. Hart realizes that the fight will be endless if he doesn't come up with a plan. After attacking several times, Hart notices something shining within the skeletons, which he suspects to be their core. When the summoner orders the skeletons to attack again, they don't respond to his command. Instead, they turn to attack the summoner and the other robed individuals. Feeling cornered, the summoner calls forth a more powerful creature, a golem. The golem easily crushes the skeletons with its bare hands. Observing closely, Hart notices that the golem also has an object on its chest similar to the skeleton's core. Upon this realization, Hart starts attacking, aiming for the object on the golem's chest. The golem suddenly stops moving and then turns to attack the summoner, just like what happened with the skeletons. In fact, Hart was only trying to immobilize it with a protective magic spike, but it seems there was an unintended alteration in the spell. 
After that, Hart binds the robed individuals with the help of the skeleton army. He wants to interrogate their leader. When questioned, the leader refuses to answer any of Hart's questions. Hart suspects this is because he acted too familiar. Feeling insecure about his lack of social skills, Hart decides to bury the leader's subordinates alive if he doesn't want to talk. Unable to watch this, the leader finally reveals his identity. They are the summoning corps under direct command of the Queen. They plan to attack the convoy that will conduct the field inspection tomorrow using summon creatures. Hart is taken aback, the Queen they refer to is, of course, the Queen of this country, his birth mother. In other words, their target is Charlotte's benefits. Char is targeted because her talent is seen as surpassing the Queen's potential. If Gordo supports Char, the Queen fears that the kingdom will be divided. Previously, the Queen also attempted to involve the Imperial troops from the neighboring country in her plans. However, having failed twice, the forces directly under the Queen's command, like the Summoning Corps, are now in charge. Hart is shocked to learn these surprising facts. It turns out that all this time, the Imperial troops disguised as bandits to attack Gordo, Natalia, and Char were the Queen's doing. Hart starts to despise the Queen, especially since she abandoned him since birth. He will not forgive anyone who tries to harm the people he cares about, even if it's his own birth mother. The next day, Hart is on his way to the joint inspection with the others. Lyos looks unhappy since earlier. Then, Char tells him that he doesn't need to be sad for losing to Hart because he never had a chance to win from the beginning. Instead, he should be proud of attempting a one-on-one -on -one fight. Marianne also adds to Char's encouragement. When Hart himself tries to calm Lyos, it only makes Lyos more irritated with Hart. Lyos wonders why since Hart didn't use magic when using his sword. Hart casually replies that he just imagines himself being stronger. However, Hart finds it strange when Lyos and Marianne seem surprised. After all, Gordo and the others were satisfied with his explanation. Based on Hart's explanation, Lyos suspects that Hart is a risen demon. The term is used for descendants of a union between a demon and a human, sometimes exhibiting characteristics of the demon race. Risen demons do have extraordinary strength, but since Hart doesn't display demon-like features, Marion doubts this conclusion. A little while later, they finally arrive at the inspection location. It's the first time Hart has seen a wheat field. Charlotte is so excited that she runs around the field. While Gordo is inspecting on his own, Hart approaches him to discuss something. Since Hart rarely approaches Gordo, he knows it must be something important. Then, Hart asks for Gordo's opinion if it turns out that the Queen is targeting Char's life. Coincidentally, last night Gordo received another letter from the Black Knight. According to the letter, Gordo and his troops went to the specified location and found the Queen's wizard line there. Gordo had suspected that the Queen would be hostile towards him. However, he didn't expect her to target Char. Nevertheless, she is the queen of this country, and they can't just interfere with her as they please. Hart wishes such a queen would disappear from the world. Gordo reminds him not to speak recklessly like that. In reality, the capital desperately needs the queen right now. Despite the irony, the authority of the king has been long gone. Many nobles have been vying for the next throne. However, they haven't made a move so far because of the Queen's absolute presence. In other words, if the Queen were gone, a civil war would break out. Gordo tells a story from two years before Hart was born, when the King formed an expedition force to defeat the Demon King. Among that force was Gislade, the current Queen. Gislade managed to defeat the Demon King all by herself. She became a hero and was dubbed the Princess of Lightning by everyone. Later, with the support of the people, Gislade married the king. Hart never imagined that the queen was such a formidable person. Gordo explains that the situation could change if there's someone who can replace the queen's role. Hart then asks why Gordo doesn't become king himself. Gordo feels he's not talented in politics. However, he has a feeling that Char could do it. Unfortunately, she's still too young. At least, Gordo wants to wait until Char becomes an adult. He's confident that Char will grow into someone who can lead this kingdom. From this conversation, Hart understands that Gordo hopes he will protect Char. He will do it until Char becomes a great queen. 
With that, Hart can live peacefully and enjoy life as a shut and unemployed person.